The food of the future has nowhere to go but up. Let's say you're about to take a bite out of a fresh, delicious mango. Mango. Let's say you're about to take a bite out of a fresh, delicious bok choy. Do you ever stop to wonder where all that fresh plant matter comes from? Farms are a big reason why our species has been able to grow over the last 10,000 years, but modern agriculture comes with some pretty big drawbacks. For one thing, it requires a lot of water. Up to 70% of our fresh water goes to agriculture. And then it depends a lot on the weather. Unseasonable temperatures or long droughts like what we see in California or flooding can damage billions of dollars worth of crops. And then there's the fact that farms are often very far away from where the people are. So the food you eat may travel thousands of miles on trucks, ships, even airplanes, meaning that those leafy greens have a pretty hefty carbon footprint. But the ecologist Dixon Despommier has been advocating a technological solution to this problem for several years. It's an elegant approach called the vertical farm. Imagine a greenhouse in the middle of a city block. Okay, so far so good. Now imagine it's a dozen stories tall. Vertical farms could employ growing techniques that use no soil. With aeroponics, crop roots are exposed to the air and are fed through a moisturizing fertilizer mist. These approaches can cut back up to 90% of the water needed compared to conventional farming. This idea is beautiful, but there's some serious questions about the viability of large-scale vertical farms, and it all comes down to energy and cost. Now, with a vertical farm, the floors above are gonna block some of the sunlight for the floors below, and plants that are near a window are going to get more sunlight than plants that are at the core of the structure. So to balance this all out and to get healthy, even crops, you might have to use artificial lighting. But that takes a lot of energy, and it might mean that you're generating a carbon footprint so large that you could have just shipped the crops in from a farm anyway. Advances in LED lighting may make large-scale vertical farms possible. Industry research is making LEDs more efficient all the time. And check this out. Some plants, like lettuce, don't need the full spectrum of visible light in order to thrive. This is where we get pink houses, special facilities where red and blue lights let plants thrive, and by cutting out the rest of the visible spectrum, you save energy. Combine that with innovative energy sourcing, like the kind proposed by The Plant in Chicago. The vertical farmers behind The Plant are already using self-sustaining techniques like aquaponics, where the plants get the nutrients they need from the waste generated by an on-site fish farm. But as far as the energy is concerned, they plan on using an anaerobic digester to produce biogas, a renewable energy source, from 27 tons of food waste generated every single day. They then burn the biogas to power the lights that will grow the plants. But the plant isn't the only place forging ahead with vertical farm systems. There's already a successful vertical farm in Singapore that's three stories tall, and it's called Sky Greens. It grows leafy vegetables on shelves that can rotate up toward the ceiling like a Ferris wheel, so each plant gets an equal amount of sunlight. Here's my question for you this week. If you were designing an urban agriculture environment, how would you do it and what would you grow there? I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe to our channel. And if you're hungry for more, fill yourself up with these videos over here.